Hey guys, today I'm going to give you an in-depth overview of the cheapest CO2 laser cutter that you can buy, popularly known as the K40. These little laser cutters can be had for under $400 on eBay or Amazon and are highly capable with some light modifications. So let's start with an overview of the K40 and some essential mods that you can do. The K40 has a small footprint at about 32 by 19 inches. You have some basic power controls on the top and on the inside you have a cutting area of about 8 by 11 inches. On the back we have our laser tube which is water cooled with a pump. I have my pump in a bucket of distilled water and cool it with frozen water bottles. I use a cheap USB temperature gauge to monitor my temperatures. For ventilation, I threw out everything the K40 came with and made my own ventilation setup. It uses a 4 inch flange, dryer hose, and an inline fan I got off Amazon. I just cut a hole in a board, attached a fitting, and close it in my window. The dryer hose connects to the fitting and most of the smoke and fumes is vented outside. This setup works well and greatly minimized any smoke or smell when cutting. Alright, so let's get into the inside of the laser. For the cutting bed, I removed the clamp system that came attached, giving me a much larger cutting area. A honeycomb bed is ideal, but if you're just starting out this works fine, and I'm able to fit 12 by 12 inch Baltic birch ply inside. The next thing I'd recommend is air assist. This is a simple mod that blows air onto your materials to prevent burning and keeps debris off of your laser lens. I picked up an air assist laser head from a store called Light Object, but you can also 3D print one to save money. I attached a drag chain with velcro to the side of the laser chassis and connected the other side to an L bracket using an existing mounting point on the laser plate. I then ran a PVC tube from an air pump through the drag chain and into the laser head. Now unfortunately I don't have any video, but I also went ahead and removed the internal exhaust vent because it got in the way of the now longer laser head. You can cut the vent back with tin snips, but if you're comfortable, you can remove the gantry and take the entire vent out yourself. Now the K40 is not perfect. There are unexpected issues I've had to fix. First, mirror alignment. It's a huge pain the first time you do it. I'll leave a video below that helped me, but it can be frustrating. This is a task you'll have with virtually any laser cutter though. The next problem I had are air pockets in the laser tube. You shouldn't ever run your laser with air pockets because the temperature differences in the tube can cause it to crack. Since the K40 isn't very heavy, I found the easiest method to remove them is picking up one side so that the air can exit through the output tube. It's tricky and I have to do it regularly, but it's not a deal breaker for me. Lastly, one of my stock mirrors failed and burned a couple of weeks after receiving my K40. They're easy to replace, but it was an added expense. Overall, I ended up spending about $500 total for my K40 and modifications. I'll leave a list of specific part links and prices in the description below. Okay, so now that I've gone over the physical attributes of the K40, let's get into software. While the K40 comes bundled with software, I didn't bother using it and went straight to K40 Whisperer, an open source control software made specifically for the K40. It's super easy to use and allows full functionality of the K40. You will have options for raster engraving, vector engraving, and vector cutting, which are all determined by the color you use to make your laser cutting files. You can also adjust the point on your material where the cuts will be made. K40 Whisperer was made to use with the free vector program Inkscape. This is where you can make your laser cutting files. A red stroke will be recognized as a vector cut, blue as a vector engrave, and any other color or stroke will be raster engraved. If you're more used to another program like Illustrator, you can use that too, but you need to import and resave the file in Inkscape before you can open in K40 Whisperer. Now that I've talked about the K40, let's go over what it's capable of. I solely use mine for 3mm Baltic birch plywood and it works well. I've also seen good results with acrylic, leather, and other organic materials. The details in the engravings are surprisingly good. For small items, or just to get your feet wet with laser cutting, I highly recommend it. I tend to search around Reddit and Glowforge forums for interesting cut files or make my own in Inkscape. After hours of reading and modifying my K40, I'm still happy with my purchase. It is the best bang for buck CO2 laser cutter that you can get. Of course, it lacks a factory warranty and doesn't have the quality control of big box laser cutters, but you're also paying a fraction of the cost of something like a Glowforge. If you don't need a large cutting area and understand the limitations of the K40, it's a great buy. They're a great way to get into the laser cutting world without spending too much money, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with them. Just be prepared to read up and do some light modifications. 
Alright, so that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and subscribe if you want to see more laser cutting videos. Thanks for watching.